What is up guys? So today I'm going to be installing the Airlift 1000 kit on my 2016 Dodge Ram 1500. The reason that I'm going with this kit essentially is because uh, this vehicle is more or less just my tow vehicle. Um, as you can see it's a 1500. I do have the tow mirrors here on it. Um, and this truck just sits in my driveway for the most part. Um, I do have a work vehicle back there, so this is just tow, and that's all. Um, the reason I'm adding the Airlift 1000 here to the rear of the truck is because of this puppy right here. So this is a 2016 Jayco um, J Feather, I believe it's called. Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. But this is a 22 foot um, RV. I think it weighs roughly 5,000 pounds, which isn't too much, but it does have a tongue weight of about 500 pounds. Now, 500 pounds in the back of this truck tends to make the rear end sag just slightly. Um, the truck is lifted. Um, well, I'd say more leveled. Two and a half inches up front, one inch in the rear using blocks um, that are located on top of the coil springs in there. Now, I do want to do a bigger lift kit to this, so I figure for right now, before I do all that, um, this here, the Airlift 1000 is going to be the best solution for me. And the reason I'm saying that is because we're towing up to a thousand pounds here, it says. Um, so I don't need to go Airlift 5000 with an onboard compressor or anything like that on it. It is solely going to be used to tow this RV during the on season. Um, and again, that's 500 pounds. I'm never putting more than, I don't know, maybe two bikes and a cooler in the bed of this truck. So we're not going crazy. Um, but yeah, let's get started on how to basically install this thing. All right, so cutting back to this, um, let's go over what parts we need to get this installed done. So inside the box comes the all the hardware, zip ties, uh, your little T here, brass fittings for your airlines. We'll figure out a place to install those a little bit later. Two spacer tops for the top, or two spacers for the top of the bag. Essentially, um, the nipple will come in right here, so it'll protect it. Uh, the airline that you're going to need, your two bags um, with the air fitting on top, which is just a push lock fitting, or sorry, just a push fitting, um, in which these will slide onto. And it looks like the only tools we're really gonna need is just a set of snips and a razor blade in my case. Now, if you have the proper tools to do it, I don't, um, you're gonna wanna get a good set of, of hose, um, hose cutters because what you don't wanna do with airline is basically pinch this when we cut it off. And we do have to install this T so that we're just doing one air feed to get a leveled, um, a leveled air supply to both of these bags. So we're gonna be careful with this when we cut it. We're gonna cut it with a razor blade instead of just pinching it and cutting it. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do um, is get the rear of your truck jacked up, um, just using a jack. And as you can see over here, I do have installed um, two six ton jack stands holding the rear of the truck up with the front tire chocked. So um, there is no pressure on the rear of this, this truck whatsoever. Um, the bags are, the, sorry, the springs are fully opened up that way I can get the bag inside of it from the back here and get them managed up and start routing my airlines out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead and depress these bags and, and do what we have to do so essentially what we're gonna be looking at um, is this bag here we want to take the cap off of it and depress this bag so that I can get the um, air in there I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a quick view here see how it is starting to come down I'm gonna throw you on top of this box so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let's get this done. I apologize, this is uh, one of my first how to videos. So, essentially, what we're gonna do is pop the top of the cap off here. Um, you see, you have a brass fitting here. What we're gonna do is squeeze the air out of the, out of the uh, bag, kind of start to fold this edge over. smaller so we can try to fit it through that that bag um, we're gonna do the same thing for this other one and as soon as that's done we'll get to the install all right so 
So what we're gonna try to do is get the airbag that I deflated up top through this little part of the spring here. Um, we're gonna get through it here, sliding up, and then we're gonna try to route the air hose up over the top, avoiding the exhaust pipe here, um, and feeding out to probably the rear of the truck. But I'll have to kind of take a look at that and figure out where I want to do my air fill from, um, just to see what's going on. So let's let's go ahead and try to get this in. What you want to do is fold the top over, um, keep it depressed as full as possible, and then just pop that in there. Um, and once you get that in there, the hard part is actually going to be getting it to go up. So what we want to try to do is fold it slightly, and see here I'm already getting stuck on the sides. Um, because of the way this thing is folded. So, let's see if we can get it to nav start navigating up. <sighs> Sorry, lost my light here. See if we can put that somewhere else for you. And, uh, help see what we're doing. Help you guys see what I'm doing. Here. All right. Got that reset. And again, we're gonna try to get this bag up in here. This thing is a is definitely a royal pain to get done. It's not the easiest thing. Uh, let me think real quick, and I will be right back with you. All right. So to put it lightly, this job sucks. So essentially, you see, I've got this bag folded up here. Um, all we need to do is is while it's folded like this, you still got to get it folded in half again to get it through. Now. As you can see here, my tires are on the ground, but my truck's still up on jack stands. And the reason why is because I ended up having to disconnect the shock mounts, or the, yeah, the shock mounts there, so that I could get this bag in here. And if you see, the bag still has a twist in it. Also, it doesn't reach from top to bottom of my shock, or sorry, of my spring. So I'm gonna have to see what happens once I raise this truck back up. I do apologize, I could not film this part, but I did struggle with it immensely. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, try to get this other side in and then uh, I'll bring you guys back and we'll see how we're gonna route the cables out here and where we're gonna decide to put the uh, put the um, the air hose here and I'm actually looking right here and I, I don't use this port for anything whatsoever you know I've got my hook up here for my trailer um, my pin here to hold this in but this is a really a, a useless hole so I'm thinking if, if we route it in and out here, um, you know, I can almost bring it in this direction and just pop it right through that hole, have a spot here, hook up and blow everything up. So um, let me get knocking this side out and I'll bring you guys right back in a second. All right, so both sides are in. Um, see that side there, uh, it's hard to see, but uh, you can see the orange bag sticking down. Same thing this side here. Um, so what we're gonna do now is take a look at the lines and we're gonna run the lines from bag to bag. And I did end up in going to go ahead and install the uh, the air valve right here. Um, again, it just comes in the back here. We'll route the lines in and we will fill up from this point here. So let me do a little bit of research, figure out which route I wanna take on the lines and I will bring you guys back again. Hey, so one thing I didn't mention, um, when it comes to doing airlines in a truck. Now I had a, um, before I had this vehicle, I had a um, 2005 Volkswagen GTI that had a full airbag suspension on it. So one thing I didn't mention though is whenever you cut lines for an air suspension, you wanna make sure that your lines are pretty much as equal as possible because what happens is the air will run through these lines and also store in these lines. So if you have unequal length lines, the bag with a longer line will have a lower PSI in the physical bag itself than the one that doesn't. So what I ended up doing was just measuring out my lines. I cut two equal length. Um, any slack that's in the line, I'll just coil up somewhere and then run it to here. 
Um, what I'm thinking of doing is gonna be coming from the bag top here through the frame rail. I'll run along the frame here, and I know this is really difficult to see. I apologize, I'm filming this on a GoPro. Um, but you're gonna flow, flow through the through the frame here, keeping away from the exhaust, up around the tire, and then down into the um, into the portion where we're gonna be hooking up that at. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start running the, the lines now. I'm also gonna go ahead and get the shocks hooked back up to the rear of the truck and um, see how these bags end up doing once I blow them up and decompress them a couple times. All right, I'll be right back with you again. All right, getting back to this. So we are fully installed now. Um, as you can see, the bags are somewhat inflated. Um, what I ended up using was just a small jump pack here that I have um, for my fiance's car. Um, I filled it up to a little bit over 30 PSI and I'm just letting it sit to make sure it's not bleeding down. Um, it is not finalized, as you can see, I have a line here just kind of hanging. Um, but they are routed up around the tire. Um, and then equal length will come into this T here and you see I'm missing the thing here. But one thing I wanted to do and just make sure I don't have any leaks is use a, uh, a soapy water to kind of spray on there and just see if we get any bubbles. So let's go ahead and get that done. Um, spray here. All right, so as you can see, uh, we do not have any leaks there. So that does look good. Just check both sides of it. Um, looks good to me. Let's give this thing a shake, make sure we're nice and soapy in there. Uh, you probably cannot see this whatsoever, but I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put you down here. We're gonna pop the cup cap up here. Give that a little bit of a spray. And... Oh, that looks good. No leak there. Oh, that means we're holding pressure in this bag. We will take it right over to the other side here. So I'm kind of pushing it all over the place as I try to hold this thing. Right, over to the other bag. Again, you probably can't see it, but I can. So go ahead and give her a quick spray. Nothing, it looks perfect. All right, so good news, we don't have any leaks. Sorry again, got you all over the place. So, what we're going to go ahead and do next is just go ahead and clean up these airlines um, here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys see this part, and I'll, I'll show you how I routed the wires through here. So, let me grab you a light. Uh, Alrighty. Uh, so, what we ended up doing over here, um, which I know is definitely hard to see, but... We ran through the frame rail right there through the spring. Um, we come along the frame rail and we actually kick out right through there, that cross member right there. Um, from there we come up over the tire and um, we hit to this little section here and we're just coming down right now. Well, what I'm planning on doing is kind of just coiling it up and, and zip tying everything up there. For the passenger side tire, um, we come up over the frame rail around um, sorry, up and over this tire. We come around the front and we come down right here. Sorry, I wasn't looking at that. Come down right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie everything up. Um, because this is so difficult to see, I mean, this light's really, it's a great light, I see everything, but you guys aren't seeing really anything but a dot for where this light's lighting up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tie this stuff up um, and I will bring you back as soon as it's time to um, put these shocks back down and get this thing back down on the ground and we'll do a couple tests. See you later. All right, so the truck is back on the ground. Um, the bags are fully deflated because I do not need them sitting there aired up. As you can see, everything is out from underneath the truck. And it is just sitting back to normal with just about a one inch rake in the rear to front. Um, like I said, the reason I did this and the reason I recommend this kit, other than the fact that it's a complete pain to install, um, is that the price. Um, I paid about $89 for those those two bags on, um, on Amazon. Again, it's not the best price, but it is a good price for what I'm doing with this truck. I really don't see a need to invest in 
airlift 5000 setup i mean the, the bags alone for my truck or sorry for the bags alone for my car was like a three thousand dollar setup with air tank management all the different stuff that i did to it um i don't want to waste that money on this truck whatsoever the reason being because again it is just a 1500 if i'm gonna spend that money i want to do it on a 2500 f-250 whatever it may be i'm not a fanboy to dodge or sorry ram even though i said dodge in the beginning of the video ram as it is rebranded it is just um this is what i have right now so um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i will do a full review of these bags how they tow this camper um but it is winter time right now and i think it is supposed to snow tomorrow so i definitely got to get this thing buttoned up covered up and get that antenna down but like i said i'm gonna do a full review see how this thing does how it drives with air in the bags how it drives when the truck is re leveled and again level being a one inch rake in the in the rear to the front um and how it tows with this thing hooked up to it so again if you guys like this video find it interesting please feel free to like subscribe um and share if you can um again this is just my first video i wanted to do a quick review on it or sorry a quick install on it and um there's definitely more to come so if you guys have any questions anything like that feel free just like subscribe and uh, i'll catch you guys on the other side